excellent day for an exorcism. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're looking over the main cast of the groundbreaking original Exorcist movie and seeing where their lives and careers took them from there. Don't be scared. We've met before. Mother. Mercedes McCambridge, Pazuzu. Well then, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Damien Karras. And I'm the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. The only actor on this list to not physically appear in the film, Mercedes McCambridge is best known within horror circles for providing one of the voices for the demon Pazuzu. Your mother's in here with his cash. Would you like to leave a message? I see that she gets it. To achieve such a raspy voice, McCambridge opted to chain smoke, drink whiskey, and even down raw eggs. We'd say that's definitely above and beyond dedication, but it certainly worked. I'm only a human being. It's that close in everybody. Everybody can from this second forward. <laughs> that isn't hard. Despite playing such a pivotal role, McCambridge initially went uncredited for the film, but intervention from the Screen Actors Guild eventually rectified the issue. The Oscar winner worked sparsely after that, devoting most of her time to helping people overcome alcohol use disorder, something she herself had gone through. She passed away in 2004 of natural causes. Jack McGowan, Burke Dennings. The Exorcist is often considered one of the most cursed films of all time. There were nine deaths, which is an enormous amount of deaths connected with the film. In addition to numerous onset accidents and injuries, several people directly or tangentially involved with the production tragically died, one of whom being Jack McGowan. Was it public relations you did for the Gestapo walk? Community relations. Swiss. Yes, of course. And you never went bowling with Goebbels either, I suppose, eh? In the film, McGowan played Burke Dennings, the director of a film main protagonist Chris McNeil is starring in. What's for dessert? Dennings gets severely drunk at Chris's party before later being found dead with suspicion pointing towards the possessed Reagan. Suppose he heard. Heard what? Haven't heard. Burke's dead. Tragically, just one week after completing his scenes, McGowan died in New York of what was called the London flu epidemic going on at the time. He was just 54 years old. Kitty Wynn, Sharon Spencer. Didn't he tell you? Didn't who tell me? Burke, isn't... What's Burke got to do with it? Look, there wasn't anybody here, so when I went to get the Thorazine, I had him stay with her and... Oh, I should have known better. I'm sorry. I guess you should have. Sharon Spencer gets more than she bargained for when her assistant and tutor gig turns into taking care of a girl possessed by a demon. Sharon does good work regardless, as did actor Kitty Wynn playing her. That's everything. I'm going to miss you. Same here. Sure you won't change your mind? A greater presence on stage than on film, Wynne comparatively didn't have as many acting roles post-Exorcist as before, though she did return for the sequel, in which Sharon fares far worse. I can't understand it. It frightens me. Have you tried a psychiatrist or a priest? I'm talking to one now, aren't I? While Sharon's demise prevented the character from returning again, Wynne hardly minded as she soon turned her attention to her personal life. She married an attorney in 1978 and retired in 1983 to focus on raising her family. Save for one other performance in 2011 at the San Jose Repertory Theater, Wynne has kept quiet. Father Thomas Birmingham, Father Tom Canavan. What about The Exorcist? Have you any ideas? How about Lancaster Marin? Interestingly, The Exorcist had a couple instances where priests were played by real-life men of the cloth. One of them was Father Thomas Birmingham. I need reassignment, Tom. I want out of this job. It's wrong. It's no good. You're the best we've got. Birmingham actually taught Exorcist author William Peter Blatty at prep school in Georgetown University, who then contacted Birmingham while writing the novel. Birmingham then worked as a technical advisor on the film, as well as portraying the president of Georgetown, Father Tom Canavan. So I said, well, I'll, I'll work with you then, if, on one condition, that you take it seriously. I don't want another Rosemary's baby. I want somebody that really will confront the awesome problem of the evil in God's world. 
Birmingham's involvement had people of all faiths coming to him for their own supposed dealings with demonic possession. Birmingham then went on to be a consultant for the first two Amityville horror movies, though he didn't make an on-screen appearance. The character of Canavan returned in The Exorcist 3, but Birmingham did not, before passing away in 1998. Lee J. Cobb, Lieutenant William Kinderman When Dennings is found dead, homicide detective William Kinderman enters the film to investigate. And considering his line of work, Kinderman is surprisingly cheerful. You know, I love to talk, film, discuss, to critique. You want to see a film with me? I got passes to the crest. It's a fellow. Prior to 1973's The Exorcist, Lee J. Cobb was already quite the established actor. He was the first person to play Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman on stage, and was twice Oscar nominated for Best Supporting Actor for On the Waterfront and The Brothers Karamazov. You're not angry. You never judge me. God will judge you. God will also understand me. Sadly, Cobb didn't have a long career after The Exorcist, as he passed away three years later of a heart attack in 1976. The character of Kinderman is the lead protagonist of 1990's The Exorcist 3, where he was played by George C. Scott. If you will forgive me, I will leave this mystical conversation. Too much of aesthetics always gives me a headache. Father William O'Malley, Father Joseph Dyer. My idea of heaven is a solid white nightclub with me as a headliner for all eternity, and they love me. Another real-life priest who both consulted on and acted in the film was Father William O'Malley. Where's the dirt gun? I stole it. I believe you. A college president shouldn't drink. Tends to set a bad example. I figure I saved him from a big temptation. O'Malley played Father Dyer, who acts as a close friend to Father Karras. I had to ask permission from the provincial, and he kind of rolled his eyes toward heaven and said, well, why not? And uh, he had read the script, so he knew that it was really trying to say something significant about religion. It wasn't just, you know, a scary movie. It was a movie that was talking about evil. While Dyer also returned in The Exorcist 3, O'Malley did not, focusing his efforts on teaching and producing books on Catholicism, of which he wrote 37. A graduate of College of the Holy Cross, O'Malley spent much of his professional career in education. He taught AP English at McQuaid Jesuit High School in Rochester, New York for over two decades, as well as at Fordham University in the Bronx and Seattle University. However, in 2019, O'Malley was accused of a sexual assault from the 1980s by a former student. He died in 2023. Max von Sido, Father Lancaster Marin. I think the point is to make us despair. To see ourselves as animal and ugly. While Father Marin is quite old in The Exorcist, actor Max von Sido was not. Indeed, extensive makeup was done to make the then 44-year-old Sido pass as an elderly priest. When I met with him, I realized how young he actually was. He had often played older in Bergman films, so we knew it was going to be a lot of makeup for him, but he was like a guaranteed performance. Perhaps more than any of his co-stars, Sido had an extensive career post-Exorcist. In addition to returning for the sequel, Sido had numerous memorable roles in popular media. From Ming the Merciless in Flash Gordon, to voicing Vigo the Carpathian in Ghostbusters 2, to the Three-Eyed Raven on Game of Thrones. You finally show me something I care about, and then you drag me away. It is beautiful beneath the sea. But if you stay too long, you'll drown. He was twice Oscar nominated for Pele the Conqueror in 1989, and Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close in 2012. While Sido passed away in 2020, Father Marin continued to be a franchise mainstay, played by fellow Swedish actor Stellan Skarsgård in the mid-2000s. Goodbye, Mr. Sommelier. Au revoir, Mr. Marin. It's Father Marin. Jason Miller, Father Damien Karras. I'm Father Karras. I'm very sorry. Hello. It's all right. I should have told you I wouldn't be in uniform. The year before The Exorcist was released, Jason Miller won the Pulitzer Prize for his play That Championship Season, which also won the Tony Award. Then he was Oscar nominated for playing Father Karras, which ain't too shabby for someone's first on-screen acting gig. You ask me what I think is best for your daughter. Six months under observation in the best hospital you can find. 
Miller eventually wrote and directed a film adaptation of that championship season, in addition to returning in The Exorcist 3. Incidentally, who is this Damien you mentioned? Don't you know? I know nothing. Except I must go on killing Daddy, I must shame him. He also had a supporting role in the fan-favorite sports biopic, Rudy. If you had a tenth of the heart of Rutgers, you could have made All-American. As it is, you just went from the third team to the prep team. Go on, get out of here! While Miller continued to act in film here and there, his passion was primarily still in theater. He worked as an artistic director of public theater in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where he died of a heart attack in 2001. He survived by his four children, including fellow actor Jason Patrick. Linda Blair, Reagan McNeil. Hey, I, I think we've got a guest. You're gonna die up there. With production beginning when she was just 13 years old, Linda Blair gave one of horror's most terrifying performances as the possessed Reagan McNeil. The role made her a household name and one of the youngest Oscar nominees of all time. Naturally, Blair returned to headline the sequel, though it conversely received hugely negative reviews as one of the worst horror movies of all time. What's the matter with you? I was possessed by a demon. Oh, it's okay. He's gone. <laughs> Blair's career never reached the same level of publicity, but she was never too far from the horror genre, becoming something of a sex symbol in 80s grindhouse cinema and even having a cameo in the first scream. So how does it feel to be almost brutally butchered? Hey, hey, no, leave her alone. People want to know. They have a right to know. She's since become an animal rights activist, founding the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation, which works to rehabilitate rescue animals. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Ellen Burstyn, Chris McNeil. How do you go about getting an exorcism? I beg your pardon? Any superfan will know that production on The Exorcist took its toll on lead actor Ellen Burstyn, as an injury sustained while filming led to permanent damage to her spine. Still, Burstyn's career has thrived, as she's been nominated for a whopping six Oscars, including a rare one in the horror genre for The Exorcist. I'm telling you that that thing upstairs isn't my daughter. Now, I want you to tell me that you know for a fact that there's nothing wrong with my daughter except in her mind. You tell me you know for a fact that an exorcism wouldn't do any good! You tell me that! She picked up her golden statuette the next year for Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore and eventually completed the triple crown of acting with a Tony and multiple Emmys. I felt like an empty shell. Like someone had reached inside of me and scooped out my soul. And I would rather be dead than go to that place again. The last of the main Exorcist cast to reprise her role, Burson is doing so in time for the 50-year anniversary with 2023's Believer and its planned sequel, Deceiver. I believe you can help get our girls back. Exorcism is a ritual. Every culture, every religion, they all use different methods. It's going to take all of them. Who do you think gave the best performance in The Exorcist? Sound off in the comments below. David! Amen. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.